The more you work with fusion, and the larger and more complex your compositions become, the more likely it is that you're going to start working with expressions. Now, to use expressions well, you need to be able to know what the names of various properties are. And to illustrate this, let me just bring up a very basic composition. Here is a background image or a background generator, and I'll just give it a nice, interesting purpley color. And let's bring in an oval or an elliptical mask. So right now it's circular. Let me go ahead and have, we only need one viewer for this and hide the media pool, distraction free. So here we have a two node composition. Background is a nice purpley color and we have a circle, but you can also uh, adjust the width to make it an ellipse. A circle is an ellipse, but that's okay. Let's say you wanted to uh, work with this, but you wanted to make sure it was always a circle meaning you always want to make sure that the width and the height are the same as each other. Well, it gets annoying after a while or tedious to always have to change the width to something, copy its value, and then paste it into the height. So what would be nice is if you could kind of lock those together. Or another way to put it, it would be great if the height was always equal to the width. With expressions, that's quite easy. You come, come here and hit equals and width, and there you go. They're now tied together so that if you adjust the width, the height will always adjust to be the same. So what did I just do? Let me go ahead and right click on height and remove the expression. If you click in a box, the keyboard's shortcut for entering an expression is hit equals, and then I want the number to, that appears here to be the same number that is showing up in the width box. So if I hit equals here and type in width, what that does is replace this with whatever the current value of width is. So as you can see, as I change the width, the height changes as well because it's just saying plug in the value of width there. Now, I just happen to kind of, in a way, guess what is the name of this width property. But sometimes it's not obvious what the names of properties are. You can always take a guess, but maybe the guess is, is incorrect sometimes. So what I would like to show you today is a few different ways to find the name of a property on one of the nodes in your composition. Now, just as a quick refresher, let's say we had a few other nodes in here and let me bring in something a little wholly unrelated to everything. Just we have now a grab bag of tools. And let's rename them because rather than use the default one, because that can kind of get in the way of understanding what I'm typing, because you might start to think that it's, it's tied to the type of noise you're using and it's not, it's tied to the name. So fast noise, I'm just going to call it noisy. Here, ellipse one, I'm just going to call it oval, although it's an ellipse. Delta key here, I'm going to call it D key. Background, I'm going to call violet. And rectangle, I'm going to call rectangle, or we could just call it rect. There we go. We have five nodes with distinct names. If you click on any node and look in the inspector, you have these controls. These properties are often numerical, like the center is a point, but the detail, for example, is just a number, contrast is a number, and so forth. Every value for every node in here has a unique name, and that name is the name of the node dot and whatever the name of the property is. Let me illustrate. I'm going to bring in a node called custom tool and I'm going to bring it over here and I'm going to rename it to ignore. And I'm going to use this as kind of one of the ways to be able to find out what the names of properties are so you don't have to guess. With the custom tool, if you come up to config, you will see that you can select how many point and number controls you want to have. So let's have just one number and one point. Uncheck these. So now if you come over to the controls, there's one point and one number. And we'll call the first one just number property. And for this point, we will call it point property. Now let's click this ignore node and make sure it is pinned so that it's always there. Also, I want to right click on the point property and say we want to work with expressions and for number property, right click and select expression. Now, suppose we click on the rectangle mask node that we have. 
The name of it is rect, and it has three pages of properties. And we're on the first page of controls here. And let's say we want to know what is the name of how about border width. Right now it's zero. But we might guess it's border width. But do we know for sure? Here's a way to find out. This is a number. And so we're going to come down to our custom tool node, which we called ignore. And we're going to use the pick whip tool. So for the number property, we're going to use this pick whip tool, meaning we just hold the plus sign and we're just going to drag the end up to whichever property we want to know the name. And we want to know the name of border width. So if we mouse over it anywhere on this row and let go, what it does is it shows the name of that box is rect, the name of the node, and border width, the name of the property. And you separate them by a period. That's just kind of a reference to computer programming, where you have an object, period, and a property. That's how programming or how programmers will refer to certain values and certain things. So let me expand rectangle again. Now, if we adjust border width, number property should adjust as well. And it does. You can see as I scroll this up and down, the number property is, is changing. So far, so good. We got lucky here where border width just was happened to be named border width. So even if we didn't use the pick whip tool, let's say we came back and removed the expression, we could have said, let's just take a guess. Let's say it's equals to the name of the node, that much we know for sure. And then we could guess border width. And then you could uh, try adjusting it and it works. Let's try something else like the delta here. This has something called red under the key page. So you might think, let me unselect the rectangle. I had pinned that. So the red is a numerical value. So what we're going to do is we're going to take our numerical property here, our number property here, take the pick whip tool, come up to red and mouse over and let up. The guess would not have been correct. The name of the node is D key. We can see that it's displayed on the node here in the node inspector. But the name of the property is background red. It's not red. It displays red up here, but it's background red. I don't know about you, but I would not have guessed background red. Although above it, it is background color. That probably should have been a clue, but what can you do? And it makes me wonder, what about the gain? Is it background gain or not? We could take our pick whip, check it out. And it's not, it's just gain. So gain is gain, but red was background red. So you can start to see where guessing after a while would become really frustrating. And this is one way to just find out what the property name is without having to do a guess. Here's another way. Let's say we go to the oval. And for this one, we're not going to use the uh, custom tool, which, which in this case I was using to kind of look up something. So let me just unpin the custom tool and let's click on oval. So now we just have the oval controls up here. Let's say we want to know what is the name of the, how about soft edge? I would guess soft edge, but let's say, let's play along here. So by default, it's zero. Here's a trick I would recommend. Type in a number, a random number, like 0 0.07. And there's a reason why. What I'm gonna do now is right click on oval, go to settings and click save as. I'm gonna save this as, oh, the, the name is already entered for you. So it's the name of the node dot setting. So oval dot setting is fine. So let me save that. Now let's open that file. Okay, so here is the file that we just saved. The reason I wanted you to type in a random number, 0 0.07, is if you copy that, come over here in whatever file, you, what, whatever file editor you're using, I'm using Visual Studio Code, but you can use anything you want, Notepad, uh, Vim, what have you. You can now search for 0 0.07 and it will take you to the property because sometimes these setting files can be very, very large. And this will save you from having to scroll through and look for it. If you pick a random number, search for that random number, it'll take you there. And the name of this property is soft edge. So let's come back to resolve and look at oval and soft edge would have been a pretty good guess. So that is another way to find the name of a property. And that is to adjust the property, especially pick a random value for it, a random believable value. Although I wonder if I could type in 12. Oh. No, it maxes out at one. So I would have had to have guessed a smallish number. Save the node as a setting file, open up the setting file, search for the value you just entered, 
and that will let you know what the property is. So those are two kind of hacky ways to do it. One is using a tool and use the pick whip in that tool to the property you want to find. And the other is to adjust that property, save it as a setting file, and then look in the setting file and see what you have. A third way I've been exploring, but I haven't been able to get it to work yet, and that is to use the console. If you come up to workspace, come down to console, let's let's pick the language uh, you want to use. I always use Python, so I'll be using Python 3. And this brings up a Python interface for kind of prodding and probing into uh, the composition you're working with. And so by default, there is a variable called comp, which is the current composition you're working on. And so if you know Python, if you don't, that's okay. But if you know Python, you can start to inspect this composition and see what is there. And I've poked and prodded. I've tried to see if there's any way in here for me to find a list of the property names. And I haven't been able to find that yet. I've looked through all the various documentations from both Blackmagic and on GitHub, and I haven't been able to find that yet. You know, I can find the name of the tool or the node, inputs, outputs, all that type of stuff, but I haven't been able to find the names of the properties. But I suspect there might be a way to find it. And if anyone watching this knows how to use the console to find the list of property names for a given node, that would be fantastic because I think everyone has different ways of working. Some people might prefer the pick whip. In a pinch, you can always just adjust the properties, save the setting file and look at it. But I think this would be another good alternative. Just have the console open in a different window. And whenever you're kind of curious, just bring up the list of properties for one of the names here. So like here, for example, oval is available as a property for on the composition, so it's oval. There it is, so that's what's available for the oval node. And there is things like get data and get ID and things like that. So if, for example, you wanna look at the ID of this for the comp oval ID, there you go, it's an ellipse mask. And you can also look at the name of it. So if we wanna look at the name, it's oval. But if I try and use something like get data, nothing comes back, and if, is it, possibly not a method. No, it's a remote function. So that's not getting me very far. There's control page names uh, and that gets you closer to what is displayed here in the inspector. The inspector has three pages of controls, controls, image, settings. Although settings is what they display, it's not what they use here. So I could say get control page names. And there we have controls, image, and common. I think common is an older name that they've since changed. But yeah, I'm not having any luck finding the property name. So if anyone who uses the console and knows Python knows if there's a quick way to look up uh, the property names that way, I would be very much appreciative. But barring that, these are two ways you can do it. Pick whip tool, save the setting file, and look in that. Hope that helps, and I will see you in the future.